Okay, I always like to start off these shows with a little live music. Uh, since one of my featured, one of my key clients, the Bethesda Blues and Jazz Supper Club in downtown Bethesda, I have uh, connections to some local artists. And Drew Gibson has been kind enough to uh, let us use any of his uh, music from his um, his self uh, produced CDs. And this is a song that is called uh, Letterbox. I think it's a great kind of acoustic intro. So this is Letterbox by Drew Gibson. Welcome to the BNI Blast on Blab. If you're listening to this on the replay, retweet and share this with your followers and fellow BNI and business networking colleagues. I always like to start off with uh, what is BNI. BNI is an acronym for Business Networking International. BNI is the largest business networking organization in the world with over 7,000 chapters, 190,000 members. In 2015, BNI generated 7.7 million referrals, resulting in more than $9.3 billion worth of business for its members. BNI offers the opportunity to share ideas, contacts, uh, but most importantly, referrals. Um, so at this point in the, me in the uh, meeting, we always like to tell you, if you're just joining us, to tweet this to your, to a, tell, they used to call it Tell Little Bird, but tweet this to your followers. You can if you're watching from a computer and you're logged in with Twitter, you can click the little tweet button there and that will share it on your Twitter account. There's also a post to Facebook button up there. We would encourage you to do that. I'm going to do it myself. You can write a little message like, Ani is live. Hashtag beauty. B-E-A-U-T-Y. And hashtag spa. That's what I'm putting. Uh, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Brian Lobig. I'm a uh, internet marketing consultant in Bethesda, Maryland area. I'm a member of a business networking international chapter called the Capital Business, Biz, the Capital business Alliance here in the DC area. And I'll introduce my, I'll have my co-host, Philip, introduce himself. Good evening, I'm Philip Day. I am the CEO and manager of Philip Day Communications. Um, this week, I guess I could tell you that I'm, I'm a, I love writing copy. I uh, write marketing copy for websites, for ads, for um, social media, and um, help businesses communicate to other businesses and to their customers. Um, you can catch me at Philip Day Communications, and that's 1L.com. And I'm looking forward to, to speaking with our guest tonight. And and what our production associate, our assistant producer, is uh, Stephanie, and she is kind of in the side chat over there. Um, she'll be welcoming people to the group, kind of making sure we pay attention to anybody asking questions over there and uh, other kinds of managerial functions. One of the things that Stephanie does, which is uh, fantastic, is she she really kind of pre prepares our guests for the interview. So she'll meet with them prior to the interview, make sure they have the setup correctly, make sure that they have um, – They've got, you know, semi-decent lighting, that they've got a microphone, you know, that everything is kind of working. Um, she also helps kind of promote this before and after the event. So um, Stephanie is really key to uh, the production of this broadcast. Um, so at this time, uh, I'd like to introduce to you uh, one of my favorite BNI members, Tani Chowdhury of TC Beauty Care. Uh, TC Beauty Care serves the greater Washington, D.C. area, Delaware, and now Baltimore. Tani's business specializes in bridal hair and makeup and mobile spa parties. She recently won the Wedding Wire Couples Choice Awards for 2016, which I saw on social media, and has recently expanded to the Baltimore and the Delaware uh, markets, right? Yep, absolutely. Well, fill in any gaps from that intro, Tani, and tell us something personal about yourself, too. <laughs> uh, something personal would be that I'm obsessed with that show, South Park. And it's oh. so easy. <laughs> uh, but yes, you actually have it, you hit it right on the nail. That's pretty much it. Um, the company started off a few years ago and we started off doing spa parties, but then there were a lot of brides that loved the idea of mobile hair and makeup being able to come to us because nobody wants to go somewhere on the day of their wedding. So oh, yeah. that's kind of how we ended up in the bridal industry and it ended up being our biggest demographic. 
Very good. Well, that kind of leads into my first question for you, which is what describe for people what is a mobile spa? Because really that was kind of new to me, that whole mm. concept when I met you. And then how does that differ differ from like a traditional spa? Absolutely. So of course you have your traditional spa at any in this area specifically, you can walk down the street and you'll have 10 places ready to give you a massage for <laughs> $59, come on in. Uh, and I'm sure all of everybody here is aware of that. But one thing that was really missing in this industry or in this area is the idea or the ability of somebody to come to you, but in a safe way, not like who's working out of their basement, but somebody who's actually legitimate, licensed, safe, has a website, and then will actually come to your house and do services for you. My biggest, two biggest concerns in this area was that safety, because I'm sure everybody wants to know who's going to be coming into their home. And then the next one was actually having a physical location so that if clients want the option to be able to meet with us, they can do so in person as well. Yeah, the best of both worlds. Yeah. Tani, what makes a good massage? I mean, you know, we can all, we all get, we've all gotten a massage from our spouse or maybe we've got a <laughs> professional one, but frankly, I don't know. Well, if you're lucky. What is the difference? Yeah. What's the difference between just, you know, a, a nice little massage on your neck to a professional deep tissue massage? Can you define those for us? Yeah, absolutely. So there, um, the best way to say is when you see, Groupon Living Social, you'll see ads filled with that says reflexology and acupressure yeah. and things of that sort. I'm sure everybody has seen it. Mm -hmm. What you want to look for is where it says LMT, Licensed Massage Therapist. Uh -huh. And LMT is a person who actually goes to school, gets registered with the state, takes a board exam, and then they are licensed because they understand the different nerve endings and muscles and every single cranny like Brian is doing right now. <laughs> they understand every single of those nooks and crannies and they understand what's causing it. If you ask them a question, i.e., hey, my neck is hurting, they will give you a scientific reason why your neck is hurting by touching your neck, not a, mm -hmm. I guess for better word, mind my French, BS excuse that um oh you're stressed out so there will be a very good reasoning of what is happening to your body and if you talk to an lmt again the biggest thing to look for is a licensed massage therapist an lmt when you talk about massage again million places exist here where they rub <laughs> and they give you a massage but not all places are licensed so you have to look into those and i think that's what differentiates between a professional yeah correct massage versus somebody who can really cause more pain to you at that mm -hmm. in the long run. Well, if I could piggyback off that, you know, when you talk about licensed, okay. Explain for us the licensing process and and also, you know, when when you're when you're with with an LMT, what what are telltale signs or or or, or signs that they they really know what they're doing? Like for instance, when you when you massage so if you could take us through the licensing, what, what does that all mean in, in, in a, a really professional massage? So um, a telltale sign would be if you ask them a question about, um, hey, my back is killing me. Can you give me an idea? What do you think it's causing it? And they can they will probably take a look at it as in like they will actually physically touch you, be like, let me take a look. And they can see where the knot is. So one of the biggest things is them actually doing a consultation with you instead of just diving in and being like, oh, you're in pain, get on my table. Let me just start massaging you, take off your clothes. <laughs> so <laughs> if, when somebody does that, that's probably not a very good sign. Um, we had gone to LA and we saw all these massage places and they were all charging $39 for an hour, $29 an hour. And I was shocked. I was wondering how does a professional massage therapist who spends ten thousand dollars on getting their license charge 39 dollars for an hour and pay a commission to for the overhead so of course when i asked them hey do you have a license that i can take a look at it got very quiet in the room <laughs> so yeah. you can just ask them because any licensed massage therapist should have their license on them as they're supposed to hmm. by the board of chiropractic at all times whether it be at your home or at the shop. And mm -hmm. second thing is 
if they do a consultation with you, asking you questions about your behavior, how many glasses of water you drink, uh, where the pain originates from, mm. how long the pain has been, very basic questions. If they don't ask you those things, they have no idea what they're doing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Wow. How, how have you been able to grow your business? I know you're expanding to Delaware and Baltimore. Uh, how is that? How has that process worked for you? Uh, I would have to give a lot of props to brides because bridal hair and makeup is kind of our biggest generator right now. Um, and our brides have been really, really great. Uh, usually we do large groups. So it's always bride plus five. <laughs> And usually there's at least one or two more people getting married. So they refer us the business. Uh, the reason why we expanded into Baltimore and Delaware was we were going out about 50 to 60 mile radius outside of Bethesda. And then a bride or the next bride to get married in that same group would be like, oh, I'm getting married maybe 65 miles outside of your radius. Would you come to us? So slowly the radius organically started growing and it started getting larger and larger in radius. Oh, yeah. So to the point where we're like, oh, we might as well hire people down there because it seems like we're getting more and more uh, hmm. up north referrals. So it's really our word of mouth and brides and the reviews. They write us amazing reviews because our brides are amazing. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of brides, what is the the trend now for weddings? Now that, you know, with, with makeup and hair and, um, and dresses and things like that, what are you seeing a lot? I, I like keeping up with trends. So what, what would you say are the trends that you're seeing now? Uh, the Kardashians are the trend. <laughs> oh, no. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think last year we did about 90 weddings, and I'm going to say probably 75% of the brides sent us a picture of, because we asked them, send us a picture of an inspiration picture of what you want to look like for your day off. 75% sent us a picture of one of the Kardashians. <laughs> Probably Kim Kardashian. <laughs> so that's probably the biggest trend. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. Interest is big. People always invite us to their Pinterest boards. Um, color wise, uh, light pinks has been a really big trend, and nude colors have been a really big trend. And uh, hopping around, we um, we're now even getting requests for brides in 2017. Wow. So it's a little bit. Wow. It's not quite as popular in the spa and makeup industry for that to happen. But the reason that's happening is brides are shopping around more and more because last year we heard some of the brides, well, not with us, but we heard some of the brides that they were unhappy with certain of their vendors because they felt like they waited too long and they just had to go with whoever was available. Available. Oh, so we are seeing a okay. lot more brides shopping around uh, right now. We have a couple of questions I want to answer from the audience. Yeah. The first one um, is from Steffi. I'm going to put it on the screen. Oh. And she's, can you see that? Is it legal for them to open up business without a license? Uh, legal for whom? Is it legal for probably the the, uh, the massage therapist to open massage a business? Massage therapist, yeah. It is not legal, <laughs> mm. but people do it. And uh, I think in Bethesda, they had about eight places shut down a few years ago, which wow. is why license here is so difficult now because oh, really? they were operating um, without a license. They were, they were, there was a lot of human trafficking issues also happening. Wow. So it, it's a lot of issues comes with massage for some reason. So this industry does have its own, uh, I guess, bad reputation in a way. So mm -hmm. uh, I was in the legal world before this. So. I, I was definitely the first person to see these are the bunch of regulations that I need to follow and how do I follow it? Um, so that was my mm -hmm. perspective on it, but more and more looking into it, I see how many times people do things incorrectly. So since I can't you're, control, I can't since, control what they do, but I just try to make mm -hmm. sure that I do things correctly. That's since you're working in, in multiple States, do you have to get separate licensing for each of those States? Exactly. Yes. Wh which ones are more strict or more difficult to get? Maryland. Maryland's Maryland. the most? Uh, our shop is in Maryland, un unfortunately, in a way, because it is. Uh, it was rated, I think, number 47 state, worst state to do business in. So almost wow. one of the worst states to do business in, unfortunately. Wait a minute. Mm -hmm. And where Virginia was rated, I think, top five to do business in. Mm. Uh, we applied for a license, and we were licensed within a week or two. With Maryland, it took us nine months to get our license. Wow, amazing. <laughs> Here's a question. 
Here's another. Go ahead and answer, ask this question from James uh, Philip. How many crews can you send out to do weddings on a single day? Uh, yeah, so the largest wedding we ever did was for 22 people. So we did hair and makeup for 22 people, and we did it under four hours with just five people. So um, we have a crew of thir uh, 15 almost at this point, um, and I'm, all 15 can work. <laughs> so for hair and makeup, I would say the largest we usually do is probably 10 staff members, but that would have to be a wedding party of almost 50. Wow. So we haven't had that happen yet, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a celebrity wedding. Yeah. <laughs> um, what, how have, if you think about how your services and have changed since you first started, what, what how has you, how has your, um, your products and your serv <clears throat> services changed over time? Where, where did you start and like, where are you now? Um, so definitely we started off in the mobile spa party section. I was very interested in the idea of massages and manicures and facials at the comfort of somebody's home because I didn't see anybody doing it. It's a very popular concept in California and there's a lot of regulation issues and I saw most places doing it incorrectly. So I thought that was that was something that we could bring in as a strength because we had a competitive advantage to it just because mm -hmm. no one else was doing it. Oh, yeah. However, we ended up being very popular in the hair and makeup section. So right now, I guess we are kind of in a way dominating the hair and makeup section. Uh, we were not expecting that at all. Um, we are expecting to do anywhere from 150 to 180 weddings this year. Uh, wow. But again, that's not something that we were ever expecting. I always thought, spa parties would be our biggest thing, but I guess it makes sense because DC, Maryland, Virginia is one of the highest in terms of number of weddings. Very good. Let's let's talk about BNI. Tony, what what attracted you to BNI? And um, when you when you're networking with people and you talk about massage, what what is uh, what is one of the points that you kind of touch on because of course, unfortunately, massage does have, um, you know, a poor reputation among some people, but when they meet you and they realize, Hey, this is, this is professional. Okay. And you know, it's a whole different story. Could you tell us your, your thoughts on that? Um, well with B and I, why I, I got interested and I did join was actually, I was doing a Google search of, um, top, 10 ways to promote your mobile spa business. And BNI came up on two of the searches that join a BNI group. And I thought that was a very interesting way of doing things. And when I went to a BNI group, I loved the fact that uh, people actually had to pay a membership and apply and actually do an interview to get in because I thought that it made it more exclusive. So people who did join, it was almost like a fraternity or sorority. You, you wouldn't just drop the next day because you had made a significant commitment into it. So to me, that seemed like a much better way of networking than any of the other networking events I had gone to. Um, and in terms of the whole massage aspect, uh, it was definitely convincing some people that uh, there is a professional aspect. I think a lot mm -hmm. of people would be a lot of people were really shocked that I had, I went to University of Maryland or that I have an MBA or that I was in a corporate world and then I ended up in the nail business. Um, my mom likes to joke that, oh, you went to University of Maryland and you have an MBA there and now you're a barber. So <laughs> it's a joke with our family, but, but my point of it was that because of my background, I can do things a little bit differently. I can be, I can bring a professional aspect uh, when you look into the spa world, it's very lucrative. It's very lucrative. It's very pro profitable too. But the reason why so many people fail is because they're so disorganized. When I tried to invest in a spa without opening my own, uh, I tried to ask them for their books, and most people didn't have any books. They didn't have any numbers. They didn't know what QuickBooks was. It was very, very disorganized. So I knew that I didn't want to buy one. So that's why I looked into opening my own, and then. The idea was at that point convincing people that, hey, I know there's a person who's reliable in the background, so it's not like, you know, I'm going to take your money and run away. Yeah. <laughs> Things are actually going to be the, done the correct way. Speaking of BNI questions, um, tell us how long you've been involved in business, BNI, Business Networking International, and then what advice would you give to like a new member coming in? 
Yeah, I think I've uh, I've been involved almost two years now, pretty much a little bit less than the amount of time my business has been in place. Um, advice wise, I'm going to say that you should always shop around, uh, mm -hmm. not just go to the first BNI and join, mm -hmm. because I think BNI is helpful, but also if you join the join a BNI group, that's not good for you. It's going to be a huge commitment that's not going to be fruitful. Mm -hmm. uh, and I say this because there might be a BNI group that's good for businesses that are more into administrative work, office supplies, things of that sort, that might not have any productivity for a BNI for my business. But then the BNI that group that I am in, it has a videographer, a photographer. Uh, it used to have a event planner. Like we had individuals that were in my industry, so I get referrals as a result of that. Mm -hmm. Very good. I, I've got to ask you this question, and and I've been wondering this. It's not BNI related, but it's massage related. Yeah, tell me. How in the world? I mean, I, I know your hands get sore uh -huh. from massaging people uh -huh. for hours on end. Uh -huh. How do you treat your hands? And, <laughs> you know, do you, do you have any type of joint issues or anything like that? Uh, it's a very interesting question. You know, most massage therapists don't work after 35. There are very few massage oh. therapists that keeps working because it does take a toll yeah. on your body. Um, yeah. My best massage therapists, they can do up to six to seven ma massages, which means six to seven hours, but it takes a toll on their bodies, definitely. Um, most massage therapists have a lifespan of 10 to 15 years, as in they don't do massages more than 10 to 15 years. Mm -hmm. So, kind of like a football player. Exactly. <laughs> you can get injured very easily. If you're ever wondering if you're paying too much for your massage, you are not. <laughs> <laughs> what well, do you. Do you do you have any lotions that you put on your hands or any type of treatments or anything like that you can tell us? Um, well, you may not, <laughs> I don't know if that's an industry secret. No, no. I, I think um, ice packs are helpful if you, and then a lot of massage therapists like to swap massages. So, uh -huh. you know, I, I have told one of my guy massage therapists, oh, I'll do makeup for your girlfriend if you give me a massage. So <laughs> we sometimes like, you know, swap services in the industry. Sure because that's a great way of uh, getting services for ourselves. But um, massage therapists are their best clients because we actually get massage therapists as clients too, because it, it takes okay. a on your body. So massage is okay. probably the best answer to your question. What other, you know, BNI is like a professional, very kind of structured professional networking um, kind of group. What other types of professional networking have you done? Um, so for my industry, there are a couple other groups uh, called like wedding related. Uh, one is called Thursday Therapy. Uh, it's a happy hour only for mm -hmm. events, uh, event promoters and event production people and you know people in the industry. Um, also doing networking, um, networking happy hours in general. If you Google, you'll see 10 of them coming up, but I try to kind of vet out the good ones just by reading reviews. Uh, BCC, I know, is a good one too, like Chamber, Chamber of Commerce. Um, for me, Chamber of Commerce and Th Thursday Therapy are probably the two ones that I usually go to or try to go to on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, we're, we're going to be wrapping up here soon, so if there are any other questions from the audience, please let us know. Um, back to B&I. When you when you look at this year, do you have any goals for BNI? And 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 tell us too. I ask this just about every one of our guests, but how do you do referrals? I mean, you're busy all the time. How do you come up with referrals? Um. So I think best people to do one to ones with, uh, which if any people who are listening and not sure about BNI. It's pretty much that, you know, BNI is a group of individuals. We come together, we see each other, but then you should also take out the time to talk to people individually. Um, so okay. we usually do one-to-ones on almost a weekly basis, uh, but doing one-to-ones with people who are well-connected. So if you do one-to-ones with somebody who always does networking events, not just BNI, but other networking events, and they have good relationships as a result of that, that's probably one of the best productive ways of getting more business because I feel like uh, the reason I can give out referrals to people, like Brian can tell you, I've given him referrals and most of it is because of people that I have networked with. It's never like a family member. Um, 
most of the time it's people that I met in a social setting because I was doing a networking group and I was like, oh, you know who could be really helpful is my good buddy, Brian, who did search engine optimization for my uh, website and it was amazing. So people who do a lot more networking events are probably the best referral source. So for me, it's easy, specifically if I like somebody's service, because for Brian, I don't have to lie. Some people I do have to lie because I'm not completely <laughs> sold, but I can't mm -hmm. say anything about bad about somebody's service, but I just don't say anything. With Brian, because I like to service so much, it's just easy to sell because I can be like, oh my God, he got me so many referrals. You have no idea. He's the guy to <laughs> go in and he's the guy to spend money on. If there's one thing you just spend money on, that's the person. So kind of getting those testimonials. So mm -hmm. as, as we always say, the best way to get new referrals is to give referrals. So I do that, and then I think Brian always keeps me in mind. And yeah. Brian refers himself, he ref he's referred his wife, his family, he's referred friends, like literally everybody he can, he refers them to me. So yeah. I guess the goal would be meeting up with more people who does more networking and networking more myself so I can give referrals. That's a good That's a good suggestion, because yeah. that's, that's what I find successful for me too, is like doing networking outside of yeah. BNI, you know, you you learn and get to know other people, and then you always have your antennas up about you know what their business is because we know in our group if you pay attention, if you don't sleep, you know, you know exactly what people need. They tell yeah. you, I'm looking for a referral of real estate agents. I know, I think of Moira from our group who is a, a settlement person. Um, I'm always keeping my ears open for real estate people. So any if I get a new real estate client, that's you know and and I get to know them a little bit, um, she's going to be a, a definite referral. Yeah. What did, go ahead, Philip. Oh, well, I was going to ask about, I, I noticed that one of our audience that, that talked about reflexology in carpal tunnel. Um, it, it, Wadira Kim uh, brought this up. Tell me about, if, if you could, as we wrap up here, but that's Erica. How would you really tell somebody to treat Oh, Erica, thank you, Erica. Yeah. How would you um, treat carpal tunnel? Your, what are your thoughts on carpal tunnel syndrome? Um, so I get yelled at by my massage therapist because I'm probably their worst client. They'll do a <laughs> massage on me and I'm always on my laptop because I'm always working on finding new words, updating social media, etc., and answering emails. So I'm so web-based. Um, my This right hand right here, like at a point they were getting really mad at me because they would fix it and then literally within five days it would just be numb or it would be hard and i'm not able to move it very much and uh they would get extremely angry at me because they said that i'm not stretching so for carpal tunnel the best thing to do is to especially if you're on in front of a laptop all the time like myself pause put an alarm on every 20 to 30 minutes and just walk and stretch your hands and that's really all you can do if you are not getting a massage right then and there you just have to stretch. And, stretch um, and if you stretch yourself, because the reason why we need massages is because when you are in a similar stance for an extended amount of time, mm -hmm. there are knots that increases right here in parts of your body. And the reason why that happens is because the muscles are not getting any sort of movement. So they are getting, uh, they're building up in one portion of your body and they're getting tighter and tighter. So when people say, oh, you have a knot, mm -hmm. I have to get that. If it makes sense, that's exactly what it is. So that's what they're trying to get out. So the more you're not stretching, okay. the harder that knot is getting. Uh, same thing when people are telling you about, um, what is it called, like toxic buildup. It's the same concept. That's literally what it is. So you're trying, to, what we are trying to do is like massage it out. Yeah, Erica was saying you can extend your arm straight and then bend the wrist for up to 10 seconds and then down for 10 seconds. Yeah. So demonstration that, and which brian is showing us right now very good you know, yeah there you go you know, one of the things there that one of the things that has really saved you know i'm sitting in front of my computer sometimes 16 hours a day yeah. one of the things that has really saved my life in addition to a really high quality chair is this is this crazy looking ergonomic keyboard can you uh, see the curve on that thing so yeah, you're kind of like that. this very yeah. cool so it's it's a really it took me like two months to get my my fingers acclimated to that bizarre shape <laughs> But um, but has literally taken the pain out of my wrists, you know. For people who like you guys who are in front of a computer a lot, mm -hmm. I don't follow it because I'm like the doctor who tells you what to do, but will never do it myself. Shoemaker's children. 
you have to stand up and do it. Like you have to have a standing desk mm -hmm. and work standing up. That's the best uh -huh. way to avoid all these knots and issues. Hmm. Because at the end of the day, you're going to slouch and you're going to have your joints like, you know, caught up in the same posture. Mm -hmm. You just have to stand up and work. That's it. Like get a standing desk. That's my next mm. investment. They're yeah. expensive. Standing desk, Phil. <laughs> Are they expensive, really? Yeah, oh. yeah, I mean, Herman Miller, I just, I got my chair from uh, American office from uh, the BNI member in my group. You know, anytime you can buy, you can buy, you need to buy something and, the, and there's a member of the group who offers that service, that's like an easy self-referral. So yeah. I just bought a chair, you know, a high-end Herman Miller chair. I'm, the one I'm sitting in is actually wow. kind of a loner. I'm waiting for like the Real custom deal. larger size. Uh, but um, mm -hmm. where was I going with that? <laughs> <laughs> um, that um, it's it sucks getting old. Just, I'm like 48 years old, and the the, the, the memories just pass in and out. <laughs> You were going to say, Brian, you were going to say, this, this has been an excellent show. We've learned a lot from, from Tani today. Thank she you. says, I don't look it. Right? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Yes. <laughs> and remember to stretch. And uh, yeah, Brian, you're not old because I'm telling mm. people I'm 21. So, yeah. Oh, I remember where I was going. The stand up desk. So I, I priced the stand up desks okay. from Herman Miller, and they're like um, starting $1,000. Like one thousand to sixteen hundred dollars. Oh, wow. I'm sure you, you know, can. I know like you can get cheaper ones. What's that? Like a, like a bar at, at your kitchen, like one of the bar tops. Mm -hmm. Like just work out of there. Just move your chair that oh, you sit yeah. on. Yeah. I have, this is this is a special <laughs> office. Yeah, I've been doing that. You see this? Got, you see this office? This is like yeah. this is like my home away from home. It's like oh, I have to God. be in here. It, it really is. I have been to his office. It is his home away from home. I can promise you. Do you see my office? Here's our here's my calendar of all of our events. Oh, nice! <laughs> wow, very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Jeff, my boyfriend calls it the crazy calendar because it just has the red markings all over it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys for inviting me. Any if there are any other? Thank you, Tony. Uh, please let me. Did you kill Kenny? <laughs> uh, Bernardo just asked if I killed Kenny. I did not. <laughs> She's talking, good. talking about South Park. <laughs> South Park, so, yep. So those of you who joined us late, um, Tani told us that she's a fan of South Park. So James is referencing the earlier part of the broadcast. Um, one of the final things we, we like to do is uh, tell you who's coming up next week. So we do these uh, live networking interviews every week. And um, our next interview is going to be with David Conaway, a mortgage lender from the uh, Bethesda, let's see, the Beth uh, the Capital Business Alliance, BNI Capital Business Alliance here in Bethesda again. And uh, then the week after that, we have Nathan Greenberg from Arkside Marketing, and he is um, a business owner for, for a marketing agency in, I think it's Denver, Colorado. And so we're kind of we're kind of networking, getting connected with uh, BNI members from all over the country at this point. We had someone, uh, kind of the top podcaster from uh, Houston, Texas a couple weeks ago. So you're in a uh, so we've got all the uh, all the most important people coming in uh, coming on this on this show, and Tandy is like you know the latest and a great line of guests. So thanks everyone for tuning in. Thank you, Tony, and Thank have you. a great evening. I'm not going to do a, a musical outro. I think we're <laughs> what, we're actually going to try to get do a live music since I have so many connections with you know live music live musicians. We're actually going to start doing like a live music intro and outro with a musician on on the screen. So. Um, That'll add a little bit of uh, musical flavor to our broadcast in the future as well. And, and thank you to all to our audience. We uh, we appreciate your uh, watching our show and participating. Have a great week. Thank you, guys.